Demon Slayer Swordsmith Village Episode 3 Review Bro Ah oh, man This this show is, is incredible um, You know I just love the pacing of this show And this is one thing that I also appreciated about um, Chainsaw Man right from one episode from one moment we could be laughing to the next episode we're in the edge of our seats you know because this episode was incredible so tanjiro and kotetsu hand over the sword that they managed to retrieve from mechanical doll to one of the swordsmiths right and it's believed or it's stated that this sword comes from a time where they had the best steelwork so this is more evidence or more testament to how powerful or instrumental this sword is going to be against somebody like Musa. This sword was handed over to Mr. Haganezuka and dude, this scene was pure comedy. The mere fact that a guy this big has a weakness of being tickled. You know, what's so funny seeing him struggle with Tanjiro back and forth. Um, and he low key reminded me of myself, right? Um, I'm actually very ticklish dude and it's such a, such a lame thing to have. But like, you, you just are who you are. Um, but you know? fortunately, you know, they do come to some form of an agreement and they give him the sword and he gives Tanjiro a temporary sword that he can use, right? Um, hopefully, the sword he gave Tanjiro is strong because, man, shit, shit is about to go down, okay? We also get another comedic scene between Genya and Tanjiro. <laughs> so incredible, bro. Genya is seemingly losing teeth, okay? My boy is like me. Um, and then, funny enough, Tanjiro is walking around picking up this dude's teeth. And when he does actually tell Genya that he picked up his teeth, you could just see the life get sucked out of Genya because he's asking himself, what kind of a weirdo goes around, I'm following me and then picking up my tooth that I deliberately took out. Like, come on Tanjiro, what the hell is going on, bro? And then we cut to this scene where we see Kanamori walk from taking a hot spring bath. He's walking down the stairs and then he sees a bus. And immediately when I saw that vase, I was like, oh, flip, they've arrived. The boys have pulled up, okay? And while I liked his, his enthusiasm, the fact that he, he was saying that it's a hazard, let me move it, you know? It shows the goodwill, being a good citizen. But I just thought to myself, yep, yeah, rest in peace, bro, because you definitely did. And we know that this is Upper Moon 5. This guy touches the vase and he dies harshly. I mean, he's crushed into that little verse you can just imagine the excruciating pain and the graphics as well the fact that they you know show you the blood right and then he just got spit out into like a, as a sludge actually and from that scene on bro i was like yep shit has hit the fan to speak about tangerous luck i mean this dude literally just came to swordsmith village to forge a sword he just recovered he isn't fully recovered and now he literally has to take on two upper demons right and I'm talking about people who are more powerful than the previous one he faced with Lotengen. Yo, and this dude Gyoko is a freaking savage, bro. Not only did he kill that guy, but he actually ate him. And he says that he should have known that his flesh was unfit. What the hell does that even mean, bro? Jeez, these demons. And I actually like the fact that these demons are strategic when it comes to warfare. Because they know that if they cut off the weapon supply of the Demon Slayer corpse, it will definitely undermine their efforts, right? So it's something that you, you know, you have to also appreciate as a, as a viewer. And then we also keep on seeing Upper Moon number four. And, you know, it, it didn't hit me until this episode that this guy is actually the number four, right? And his demeanor, the way he just is, he looks like a scaredy cat. I'm thinking to myself, how the hell is this dude even number four? Oh man, only to find out. That. <laughs> boy, boy, this dude is different. Okay, we get this mini shot where Genya seemingly goes to collect the sword, right? I wonder if this is actually his sword or is it the 300 year old sword that Tanjiro and Kotetsu just handed over. But it can't be that one. Um, but if you know and it's a big spoiler, don't, don't, don't tell me, okay? So we cut to this next scene where Tanjiro is sleeping with um, Nezuko. They're taking a, a quick nap and then Tokito shows up and he closes Tanjiro's nose. I um, mean, he asks him that I'm actually looking for Kanamori. Haven't you seen him? And then, bro, while these guys are actually in their play, we see uh, the door to Tanjiro's room open and there's upper demon number four, bro. I mean... <laughs> can you just ask yourself if this guy had decided to attack Tanjiro while he was sleeping 
because they apparently can't sense the presence of upper demons like right so just think to yourself bro this dude could have literally taken out tanjiro just like that and i mean tokito doesn't even hesitate bro pulls up a uh, missed breathing swift slash okay upper moon four manages to dodge um tokito's attack and then tanjiro also goes in for the attack misses and or gets him on the ground and then nezuko fortunately gets uh, kicks this guy in the gut and then this dude keeps on saying to keeps on saying stop tormenting me he's crying and i'm thinking bro you're the one that actually chose elected to be there nobody forced you what the hell is going on fortunately tokito manages to cut his head off okay cuts it clean and then tanjiro is thinking yes we managed oh he's thinking okay we managed to slash off his head and we know that with upper moons once you do that they actually die oh man but i, I just knew from that um attack that there is no way that this shot is going to kill this guy and yep just like we all knew okay this dude starts regenerating from the head imagine he generates into two younger versions of himself and we see now a totally different character and i mean bro um tokito tries to go in for another attack the third one i believe and this dude blows tokito to oblivion bro he blows him the hell out of that building you know nezuko tanjiro managed to hold on to the building but tokito was the direct beneficiary of that attack this dude flew miles imagine he had to run back to that entire sea i mean imagine he had to run back to that spot that's how far that guy blew tokito away bro. so while tanjiro and nezuko are, are there right there's a second one who seemingly has a staff and this guy seems to have the ability to use lightning and this dude is frying the hell out of Tanjiro is frying him so much that Tanjiro is almost he's about to pass out right then fortunately Genya, pull, pull, Genya pulls up and this dude has a Draco bro I didn't even know they had guns I um, mean Demon Slayer in this time but yeah Genya uses a gun and he manages to shoot its head off right so you would think that so Genya probably thinks that he's done something but he's only exacerbating or making the situation worse because instead of now having two upper four demons we now have four bro so imagine, here we have Tanjiro, my boy is thinking, ah man, how do we get around this? There has to be a pattern. How do we maneuver this situation? And then one of the demons bro picks up Tanjiro, takes him to the sky. Nezuko was about to actually go in for the attack to obviously protect, you know, her older brother. But Tanjiro tells him, no, dude, you need to save Genya because Genya dude had a spear in his gut. Okay. And then while it has Tanjiro in the air, bro, this demon blasts tanjiro okay i mean blasts him bro <laughs> Yo, this shit was crazy puts him on the ground my, my boy tanjiro falls through a couple of trees gets on the ground you know he's just trying to grasp the situation trying to gasp some air you know and then he looks back dude this guy is already on his leg grabs him again and is about to blast the hell out of you okay then we cut away I wonder how my boy is actually going to recover from that scene. I hope there's somebody that actually comes and saves him. I wonder if um, the the pink haired Hashira is going to come through and maybe help my boy because it's not looking good. It's looking crazy as hell. Then we cut back to Tokito, right? And my boy, um, he's heading back to where the fight was, okay? On his way back, he sees Kotetsu now battling with some random demon and that was so random i'm thinking to myself what the hell how is this kid now in the midst of a battle with a fish like um demon okay i wonder if it's actually mr kanamori okay i suspect it is maybe upper demon five upper moon five has the ability to actually transform you into like a demon like figure yourself okay after he, he devours you this dude uh, works very logically okay which is something i respect but it's also problematic you can imagine think about all the people that he might have actually let die in the midst of battle because he's thinking this person is low priority the important thing right now in this fight is to actually defeat this particular person or do said task you know but fortunately the words that tanjiro said to him um which is that if you do good it has a tendency of actually coming back to you so he goes to actually save kotetu cut slashes off the end of that um fish demon and then yeah i would actually like to see how this pays off in the future episode how you know Kotechi is actually going to pay back um tokito but yeah overall excellent episode 
expect nothing less i'm excited for the next episode yeah if you enjoyed the video definitely leave a like definitely leave a comment let me know what you enjoyed about this particular episode and if you like the content guys consider subscribing to the channel i'll check you guys next time